So, welcome back. We will continue the discussion on the wave equation. Okay, so, so, as I said in the previous lecture, so let me just recall that. So, now we are going to again consider that generator G and now in a Hilbert space this H 1 cross L 2 and with this domain of definition and we want to show that that also generates a group which does not preserve the conservation of <coughs> which does not satisfy the conservation of energy. So, this is different. Okay. So, before that before I do that. Uh, so, let me show you this. So, I just commented that this uh, Hilbert space H d H d. Okay. So, so this is not uh, in D prime R 2. Okay, so, uh, <coughs> but H d is L 2 log R n if n is bigger than or equal to 3. Okay, so, let me begin the lecture by showing this. Okay, again, just <coughs> uh, remember that our understanding of this space H d understanding is only through this smooth functions C C infinity functions. Okay. In that <coughs> so this H d is the completion of the space C C infinity in that Dirichlet norm. Okay. The difficulty arises because that norm does not contain the L 2 norm of the function. Okay. So, <coughs> uh, you have to really sit down and try to understand uh, the space H d. Okay. So, it is it's somewhat difficult. Okay. So, here is proposition let me just state that. So, if n is bigger than or equal to 3, uh, <coughs> H d is L 2 log. Okay, so, here is the proof. So, it is more like deriving a Poincare kind of uh, inequality. Okay. So, start with the claim if g is a c infinity function with compact support then so let me state that uh, integral b 0 r g x square is less than or equal to uh, <coughs> r square by 2 to n minus 2 integral this is in r n. So, this grad g x square d x. So, for any r positive. Okay, so, let us <coughs> prove this. So, this is like, so you are expressing the L 2 norm of the function in terms of the L 2 norm of the gradient. So, this is like Poincare kind of inequality okay. and here we are using this remember that n is bigger than equal to 3 and if you see the proof it does fail for n equal to 2. Okay. 
may be there are different kind of estimates when n equal to 2, but now we are not interested in that. Okay. So, proof <coughs> proof of this claim. So, let <coughs> so write uh, x equal to sigma omega. So, let me just and this omega is on the unit ball of course, this is if x is not 0 okay. and then <coughs> we have. So, this g of x is equal to minus mod x to infinity d by d sigma uh, of g of sigma omega d sigma. Okay. So, I am uh, integrating only in the radial direction. Okay. <coughs> so, now bit jugglery here. So, you uh, maybe I should have written in the let me write it once again. Okay. So, g of x now square. So, let me just write first. So, this is square mod x uh, to infinity d by d sigma g of sigma d sigma square. Okay. So, jugular is just you multiply, uh, multiply and by sigma n minus 1. So, this is the <coughs> uh, and divide by that multiply and divide and use Cauchy Schwarz. Okay. So, this is less than or equal to. So, let me write that mod x to infinity uh, maybe you have to yeah, sigma to the n minus 1 by 2 okay so that sigma to the 1 minus n d sigma so there is already square there so i don't have to put half here so this is uh, mod x to infinity d by d sigma g of sigma omega into sigma uh, there is a square here okay. sigma n minus 1 d sigma. Okay. <coughs> and now integrate over uh, mod integrate This is Hn minus 1. Okay. So, this is let me just recall that. So, this is x in R n mod x equal to 1 such that mod x equal to 1. Okay. <coughs> uh, okay. This I can before doing this one. So, you can just we can evaluate this one. Okay. So, let me write that one more step. So, that is equal to mod x to the 2 minus n by n minus 2 into this same thing. So, once we integrate with respect to omega, then we can replace this by the volume integral. Okay. That is what we are going to do now. Okay. Now, we integrate. So, this implies integral over mod omega equal to 1. So, let me again write now g uh, mod x omega. So, let me just write that uh, d 
yes omega. So, this is just with respect to omega this is a constant. So, just we do not have to worry about that. So, just and that gives us the L 2 norm square of g. Okay. So, let me just try that. dx. Okay, so, the same variable I am using, but that should not cause any uh, <coughs> any problem. Okay. And now, okay, put r equal to mod x multiply by the usual things multiply by r to the n minus 1 both sides and integrate. Okay. So, I am writing all the steps integrate with respect to r over any finite interval okay. and you get the required thing. So, this r to the 2 minus n we can in multi after multiplying by n minus 1 you get uh, r. Okay. So, that is how that thing is coming. So, we finally, get so this integral b 0 r this is the required estimate. Uh, yeah, let me write that. Okay. Of course, for a smooth function, this is always finite, so that's not uh, our intention. But the important thing is we have this estimate, and that allows us this estimate allows us to use density arguments, because H d is the completion of the C C infinity functions in this norm. Okay, this is the square of that norm in this norm. Okay. So, <clears throat> so use these arguments to conclude HDs. By usual procedure, you take a Cauchy sequence and then you show that that Cauchy sequence uh, is a Cauchy sequence even in L 2 B 0 R and then that converges etcetera. Okay. Since, this is true for all <coughs> R positive and any compact set in R n sits in some B 0 R. So, we have this. Okay. So, while doing these arguments uh, you come across some doubts and you should come across some doubts and that is part of the analysis and you learn how to uh, <coughs> answer those doubts. Okay. So, this, this is important uh, part of learning. So, this density arguments uh, raise some doubts and you should clear those doubts. Okay. So, this with this thing, so uh, let me just in the I will not do all the details, but I just uh, uh, some <coughs> important steps I will just. Uh, so, generation of a group again regarding wave equation in. So, now the Hilbert space is 
and we understand this space better because we know this Sobolo space H1 and L2 R and just remember this as I showed you by an example. So, this is a proper uh, <coughs> close subspace of this. Earlier we considered this Hilbert space and showed that the uh, generator G uh, <coughs> generates a unitary group. Okay. But now we consider this G again. Okay. So, this is here we do not have any doubts because these are our familiar objects the Sobolo spaces. So, there is uh, <coughs> no problem at all and so we work with this. So, what is the norm in this space H? So, yeah, let me call it. So, this is uh, let me put square there f 1 square plus grad f 1 square plus f 2 square. So, here this abbreviate this is L 2 norm. For other things I put that subscript. So, this is nothing but uh, the H 1 norm of f 1. So, f is because any element in this Hilbert space has two components one from the Sobolo space H 1 and another one from L 2. Okay. So, what is the domain? Domain in this case again is very nice one. So, this is just H 2 cross H 1 and G is defined by this F 2. Now, we understand better that is all. So, this uh, earlier working in this space it was complicated. So, we had to uh, include what, what is meant by this uh, weak derivative and other things. But here since we are taking uh, so the <coughs> the second component is in H 1. So, that is fine. So, this is in H. Okay. So, G I mean that you should you know always check. So, this is a subspace of that and okay. so, we have that. So, this first part is relatively easy. So, but you keep verifying these things all the time we are saying this one, but you have to verify this G is densely defined. Closed operator. Okay. So, that is relatively easy. Okay. So, next we have to worry about the resolvent estimates. We have to show that resolvent set is large enough and uh, <coughs> the required resolvent estimates uh, hold for G. So, that we can apply Hilyushida uh, <coughs> theorem again we are back to that. Okay. So, just uh, so let me <coughs> so this more or less we have already uh, done in elliptic theory. Okay. So, just uh, let me just recall them. Okay. So, 1 lemma to, to uh, do this thing. Okay. So, for lambda positive and f in H k. So, just you have to recall from the elliptic theory this is I am just uh, restating that uh, <coughs> f in H k there exist unique uh, u okay. let me say okay. u in H k plus 2 
such that uh, u minus lambda Laplacian. So, this is the starting step. Okay. So, this again since we are in L 2 theory. So, everything uses the powerful tool of uh, <coughs> Fourier transform. Okay. So, this is so I borrow this from the elliptic theory and then we use that lemma to show this corollary. So, back to our uh, <coughs> Hilbert space. Okay. So, for g, so let me write the component g 1 g 2 in h. Uh, so, this is the Cartesian product of h 1 and l 2, there exist unique f f 1 f 2 in the domain of the generator g such that uh, f minus lambda g f equal to g for all lambda. Okay. And this just follows from the lemma, let me show you how is that. So, that means, see now this operator if we consider i minus lambda g. So, this is from d g to h. So, this corollary shows that this uh, is a <coughs> uh, 1 1 on 2 map and that is the first step. Okay. Then we have to of course, obtain the resolvent estimates, but that is the first step. Okay. So, let us understand this equation component wise. Okay. So, let me write that component wise. So, then you see why there is a unique solution. Okay. So, proof proof of the corollary. Okay. So, write this uh, f minus lambda g f equal to g component wise. So, what we get? So, let me write that. So, f 1 minus lambda f 2, the first component of g f is f 2. So, that is g 1 and the second component. So, this is f 2, but second component of g f g f is Laplacian. So, again you get Laplacian f 1 equal to g 2. And now, multiply the second equation by lambda, lambda is not 0 and add them. So, what we get is f 1 minus lambda square f Laplacian f 1 equal to uh, lambda g 2 plus g 1. And this is the precisely the <coughs> equation for the Laplacian so that is stated in the lemma and here we are taking lambda positive and anyhow we have lambda positive lambda real. Okay, let me just stress that lambda. So, lambda square is positive. So, this lambda square is positive and this g 1 and g in fact, g 1 is in uh, h 1, but okay, at least this is in L 2. So, we get f 1 in h 2. But once you get in f f n in h h two, then you get f two in h one. Okay, so this implies there is a unique solution f one in h two because here right hand side is only in l two. So use uh, the lemma for k equal to zero. Okay, 
So, the important thing, so I am not going to uh, derive this in <coughs> detail. So, this is the resolvent estimate, I will just in few minutes. So, resolvent estimate. So, this is for the solution. So, you have obtained here a solution in this corollary, and now you want to obtain uh, an estimate for the solution. Okay. That is what we are. Okay. So, let me just again state it as a theorem. So, in any proof of such theorem you start with some uh, uh, smooth functions and then use uh, density arguments. So, but I will just uh, write uh, as a theorem. So, for each f again let me write this f 1 f 2 in uh, <coughs> this Hilbert space h, but you start these estimates for smooth functions and then go for uh, uh, density arguments they exist. So, again I am st uh, restating the corollary u this is u 1 u 2 in d g uh, such that u minus this is the again restatement of the corollary. Okay. Further, so this is the resolvent estimate. So, this <coughs> uh, norm of u in the Hilbert space is less than or equal to 1 minus 2 mod lambda inverse this is again f for all lambda real mod lambda. So, this is the required uh, resolvent estimate we are looking for. Okay. So, of course, we are writing this lambda. So, we have to put. Uh, so, this is bit lengthy, but not hard. So, first you have to start with smooth functions f 1 f 2 and so that we can integrate by parts easily and then pass to the uh, general <coughs> element in the Hilbert space H through density arguments. Okay. So, again replacing a lambda uh, not replace one. Now, let me just okay. so put mu is equal to 1 by lambda. So, then what we have <coughs> this theorem gives us. So, this mu in R mod mu see mod lambda is less than half. So, we have here mod mu bigger than 2 is in the resolvent set of G and we have this resolvent estimate. So, R mu g. Okay. So, let me again just write that Hilbert space. So, this is nothing but let me recall again. So, this is g inverse is less than or equal to 1 divided by 
mine. So this, <coughs> these are uh, precisely the requirements of the uh, Hill-Yoshida theorem. Uh, so we can finally state that. Okay, so. <coughs> appealing to Hill-Yoshida theorem we conclude that that G generates a group T T now T in R in H in that Hilbert space H and so looking at the resolvent estimate we have this estimate uh, 2 mod t for all t in r. As I said in the beginning, so we cannot expect uh, in this setup, in this Hilbert space, g to generate a unitary group. And again, as usual, again, if f belongs to d g, as we observed in the previous uh, setup also, the first component of uh, T T F. Okay, so this you have this U V. Okay, uh, solve the wave equation. So, that there is no doubt, okay. again we have we get a solution of the wave equation, but this time uh, that conservation of energy uh, is not satisfied. Okay. So, that is, uh, so this is we can say partially correct result. Okay. So, with that thing I come to uh, an end of this discussion on wave equation and in the next class we begin with our uh, uh, final topic namely the Schrodinger equation. Thank you.